Penn State beats Indiana 45 to 14. These are my takeaways. You are locked on Nittany Lions, your daily podcast on the Penn State Nittany Lions, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked on Nittany Lines your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. My name is Zach Seiko. Thanks so much for joining me on today's episode. Eight takeaways from Penn State, Indiana. And we will finish up the show previewing Penn State men's basketball. And I'm going to let you in on a little secret that Micah Shrewsbury and company don't want opponents to know just yet you're gonna find out yeah big secret for the nittany line men's basketball team and i'm gonna share it with you as the season gets underway today uh but we'll go through eight takeaways split over two segments four and four uh for the penn state game where they won against indiana 45 to 14 Today's episode is sponsored by LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Host your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions apply. A few quick housekeeping things. Uh, Penn State and Maryland will kick off at 3.30. That is going to be on Fox. You got to love the six-day window that the TV networks are allowed to give. Uh, so no, two weeks, too much time. Uh, we can't do that. Nope. It's gotta be within, uh, within seven days, within a week. Uh, but it will be on three 30 on Fox. Penn state is a 12 point favorite. The total is 57 going into the game against the Terrapins on Saturday. And don't expect any more primetime games, night games. It is November. The big 10 has that rule about night games, but it really isn't a high profile opponent on Penn state schedule anymore. Maryland Rutgers, Michigan state. I, I can't imagine that Rutgers is going to be a primetime matchup. So uh, you can forget about that. But I'm excited for this episode. We get to review uh, the entirety of the Indiana game. And plus, I get to share that secret about the Penn State men's basketball team that's going to have some opponents pretty surprised when they play them uh, early on in the season. And I don't think people are going to catch up uh, right away with what this is. Uh, but let's get into the takeaways. Uh, so also thank you for tuning into the podcast, wherever you get your podcast today or watching on YouTube. You can now subscribe to Locked on Nittany Lions via YouTube and watch the video version of this podcast. Takeaway number one from Penn State's win over Indiana, 45 to 14. The final uh, Penn State is definitely going 10 and two and they are going to finish in the top 10. This was a good team that people were giving about seven and five, eight and four. If you asked me at the beginning of the season, and I'm on the record saying this, I thought this was a 10 and two team. Just if you look at the schedule throughout the season, that was me being optimistic that they would beat Purdue, which they did. They beat Auburn, that they did. Uh, and some people just had those tilted in terms of a loss. Um, Ohio State and Michigan, those were the tough games. I didn't think that they were a better team. I'll admit I did change my pick from Michigan to Penn State. But I, at the beginning of the season, if you asked me, I felt that Michigan was the better team. And they proved it just at that point. <laughs> it, was a, it was an ugly game for Penn State and a bad matchup for, for the team. Uh, so thank goodness they don't play somebody like uh, Illinois or Wisconsin this year. I think that would be a, a problem for Penn State. But they're definitely going 10 and 2 overall with Maryland, Michigan State and Rutgers left on the schedule. They're going to finish in the top 10 because the committee is going to look at them and say, well, they lost to two college football playoff contenders. They held Ohio State to a pretty close contest. There's no reason we can't. They'll, they'll be ninth or 10th or so. Uh, maybe the committee won't weight these few more wins heavy at the end of the season, depending on what they do. But Penn State's definitely going to a New Year's Six Bowl. We, you can best believe that. Uh, and the defense, when they're on, they are on. 16 tackles for loss against Indiana, six sacks. You had three interceptions, one by Daquan Hardy, one by Kalen King, one by Denai Dennis Sutton for crying out loud. <laughs> Seeing him pick that uh, pick that pass off, catching the interception, uh, was a spectacle, uh, spectacle to behold because uh, he moves so well for a guy his size. Uh, and, and everybody eats on this defense, bottom line. Uh, it, it can be anybody's type of game. You had Kobe King step up. 
leading the team in tackles. Sometimes that's Curtis Jacobs, like he did uh, with 14 against Minnesota, or you have Abdul Carter in the fold. You have Jair Brown in the back end. Uh, anybody can step up on any given day for this defense. And that, that's from the front four with PJ Mustafer and Hakeem Beeman or the rotation of defensive ends, Chop Robinson, Adisa Isaac, to the middle linebackers I named, all the way to the free safety and Jair Brown. Like this is a group that has so many names. It's not just reliant on, and I didn't even name Joey Porter Jr., right? It, it's not reliant on a superstar like Joey Porter Jr. to shut everything down. Any one of those individuals can have a great day on that game. Takeaway number two, Catron Allen is ahead of Nicholas Singleton right now. And I think that's been the case for a few weeks here, but now we're starting to see that unfold a little bit more. Whether that's Catron Allen's just a little bit more comfortable in this Penn State offense or comfortable with college football. And I'll explain why. It's not Nicholas Singleton. He's very talented. He's very good. He was a five-star. He was one of the best running backs, the best running back, according to some sites, in this year's past recruiting class. However, Nicholas Singleton was able to benefit from his athleticism in high school. I actually had the privilege to call one of his uh, multi-touchdown games uh, in a high school game when he was a senior. And simply, Governor Mifflin High School would pitch him the ball into the open field, and then he would use his speed in that open field to just blow past everybody. He doesn't have that benefit anymore, and now he's trying to adjust to the college game. And the fact that he's made so much progress to this point. Now, the difference between him and Katron Allen, Katron Allen had that at IMG Academy. He was playing comparable talent more often than not. He was asked to do things more of an inside and outside zone, whereas Nicholas Singleton was just like, here's the football, run downfield as fast as you can. Um, and, and that's pretty basic. Not every single time Singleton touched the football in high school, it was the case. But that was their strongest asset. And it's like, why aren't you going to do something that we that doesn't work? If it's not broke, don't fix it. Uh, but Katron Allen inside of this Penn State offense has that familiarity, and that's why he's ahead of Nicholas Singleton. I mean, 18 carries, 86 yards, three touchdowns, two receptions for 72 receiving yards. Uh, he's just been so impressive to this far uh, to this point, at, uh, and 150 yards total offense for Katron Allen. He just sees the field so much better. Now Singleton didn't have a bad day. I don't want to. I don't want to take him down when he actually performed very well. Sixteen carries, seventy-three yards, and a touchdown himself. And it was to see Nicholas Singleton actually get better as the game progressed. And you you can do that against a team like Indiana, not against a Michigan and Ohio State, but struggling with with finding a couple gaps uh, on the zone runs in in the beginning of the game. But then got into the second half, and Singleton looked like he traded jerseys with Katron Allen the way he was running. He found some lanes. He was patient. He was waiting for plays to develop. He was running through guys as instead of trying to step around them. So it's a matter of him gaining confidence in that aspect of his game rather than uh, just being the one-trick pony. Uh, college football teams are aware of it, how fast he is, and he still has that, and eventually he'll get back to it. But you got to develop that other side of your game. So this Catron Allen, Nicholas Singleton back and forth versus they are so good at two different things. Nicholas Singleton, had he gotten to the open field like Allen did, he would have taken that to the house. Whereas Allen ran out of gas a little bit, uh, slowed down, defenders caught up to him, but he had the vision to cut all across the field, which makes them just so different. Uh, in between the tackles, Allen's your guy outside of the tackles, Singleton's your guy in open space, and they're only going to get better. Like They're here for two more seasons at least, uh, and a dynamic duo that any team in college would love to have. Takeaway number three from Penn State's 45-14 win over Indiana, and that is... Watching Drew Aller play is just different. Yeah, I, I think I believe that Sean Clifford, yes, I still believe, and I will stand by it. I will own this. Sean Clifford is the better quarterback today. He's the better quarterback right now. He understands the game differently, and you should expect that from a six-year, 24-year-old quarterback. But just watching Drew Aller play, it, it is fun 
to to watch him maneuver, watch him spin the football. He's got a I think he has a stronger arm than Sean Clifford. Like he he just knows how to fire the ball on a rope and he's very talented. We all know that. Uh watching him with his pocket presence because he's not really fast, but he's able to maneuver the pocket and move around like he's got good feet uh within the pocket. And to see him do that, to find uh, find his targets, pass into tight windows, like he is something special. And it's something that uh, Penn State is very lucky to have for the next couple of years, at least. Uh, hopefully a few if he wants to stick around and try to win a national championship as he becomes a veteran. But I like that at the age of 18, 19 years old, he has excellent field vision and excellent field sense for this point in his college career. And Drew was 9 of 12, 75 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Um, just a, a, a very, and it was a, a perfect game plan for him. You know, you're up by a bunch. You're not in a pressure situation. Uh, this is a team that you can do these kinds of things against. Indiana's just not very good at football. Um, and so you have that benefit of coming in in a non-pressure situation, but... Uh, I just think Drew Aller looks, he's very different and he's very exciting to watch. And I, I can't wait until he's the starter, if if I'm being honest. And I think I speak for a lot of people. It's no disrespect to Sean Clifford, but it will be fun when he's able to play all 12 games in full next year. And I should say 13, if I'm being honest. Uh, takeaway number four, and this is the last one in our first segment here. And I've already kind of teased it, but Indiana is very bad at football. It is basketball season over in Bloomington. I don't blame them. They just don't have anything going for them right now. They have problems at quarterback. I feel bad for Jack Tuttle, who went down with that shoulder injury, basically hopped in the transfer portal and then said, I'm not going to play anymore this season. Uh, and he was voted captain and everything. And then he said, you know what? I I'm going to do this for the team and come play this game. And he ends up getting hurt in the process. So the problem, in inexperience at quarterback behind him, there's injuries to key players. Cam Jones is their best linebacker. He hasn't been out there. Best defender a as a whole, if I have to say. And best receiver and Cam Camper's not there. So he really didn't have anyone to throw to. The offensive line is abysmal. That's how Penn State was able to get as many sacks as it did with six. So this is a good quality win for Penn State and something to keep the ship on course because they still got more football to be played. Uh, I think they can go 10-2, and two, and this is a get-right spot, a good get-right spot for Penn State, and it showed. Uh, Indiana's just not a good football team, and they very well might lose out for the remainder of the season with some of the tough games that they have. This is Locked on Nittany Lines, the takeaway episode, Penn State versus Indiana. When we return, my second set of takeaways, uh, four more about what Penn State was able to accomplish against Indiana. And coming up later in the episode, Penn State men's basketball, the secret, shh, don't tell anyone how the team is going to play ball this year and why it's going to throw opponents off, especially early in the season. I'm excited to share it with you. It's Locked on Nittany Lions. Today's episode is sponsored by LinkedIn Jobs. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. You want to be certain that you can have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. It is easy to create a free job post on LinkedIn Jobs. Then add your job in the purple hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you are hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It is why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That is linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Thanks for making Locked On Nittany Lines your first listen today. For your second listen, check out Locked On Sports today. From the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports today, available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcast. My name is Zach Seiko. Yes, we are now on video. If you didn't know, you can get it. You can get the show wherever you get your podcast. Take it on the go with you. If you want to watch the show 
check out YouTube, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so that you know whenever there's a new video that is out. We have Locked On Nows. We have, of course, the daily podcasts and everything. So check out the YouTube channel. That is sir. All you got to do is search up Locked On Nittany Lions. Follow the show on Twitter and myself, Locked On Nittany Lions on Twitter and at Zach underscore Seiko, Z-A-C-H-S-E-Y-K-O for those who are listening. Four more takeaways before we get into that secret about Penn State men's basketball. Takeaway number five, uh, the O-line's banged up, but that makeshift offensive line against Indiana worked out pretty well, didn't it? Uh, With the way they were able to run the ball effectively uh, and the guys that were rotated in. Think about this for a second. Hunter Norzad, who has been so sound since stepping in at left guard, coming back from injury, got rolled up on the first play, and it's like, man, Now you're really down some guys. And J.B. Nelson stepped in. He's the transfer from Lackawanna College. They wanted to preserve his red shirt. I don't think they're going to be able to do that. But J.B. Nelson stepped in at left guard, didn't miss a beat. Hunter Norzad, who was unfortunately rolled up on by his quarterback, Sean Clifford, was able to come back into the game. So it was good to see him not sustained what looked to be a season-ending injury, how he was uh, checked out by the medical staff and helped off the field. Drew Shelton, a true freshman, started at left tackle. You didn't, if you were, if the broadcast and anybody watching the game, if you're pointing him out, that's a bad thing. The fact that he went unnoticed means everything. And Drew Shelton had a good game. I thought he recovered well. He moves quickly for a guy his size. He's athletic. Um, And when he played high school football, all of it was down blocking. He was run blocking first. His system was run first and you might pass a handful of times. Let's take five, say five on average, right? And for Drew Shelton, for him to come in, in that kind of spot, a Big Ten opponent, your first start, blind side for Sean Clifford and Drew Aller, performed admirably, and that's nice, especially if Olu Fashionu comes back next year and doesn't enter the draft. Uh, to have Olu Fashionu at left tackle and Drew Shelton at right tackle is going to be a privilege for Penn State's offense. And like I said, J.B. Nelson at left guard, uh, I anticipate that he'll factor into a left, the left guard position, maybe even at center, uh, depending on what Juice Scruggs wants to do going into the NFL draft. So you have options next year, and this is probably the deepest Penn State offensive line in memory, at least for me anyway. Takeaway number six, Kobe King should start at the mic. He needs to start at the Mike linebacker. It's no disrespect to Tyler Elsden, but Kobe King has gotten so much better as the season has progressed. I want to see him alongside Curtis Jacobs at the will uh, and uh, Abdul Carter or Curtis Jacobs at the Sam and Abdul Carter at the will. You have the on ball and off ball linebacker spots. And that's where Abdul Carter is now when he gets in on the action, he is in the off ball linebacker spot and they move Curtis Jacobs back over to where he started a year ago and played all the season because he's comfortable with both positions. He has that versatility, but I want to see Kobe King starting at the Mike linebacker position. He had eight tackles, two tackles for a loss. The eight tackles led the team against Indiana that day. He's just so athletic. He flies all across the field. Now the problem with Kobe King, it's kind of the similar, it's similar reasons why some of the other younger guys aren't getting onto the football field. And it's because they're inexperienced. Uh, Kobe King, when you are the Mike linebacker, you're basically the quarterback of the defense. You got to know what plays to call, what adjustments to make, how to read the sideline signals and and basically call out the play on the defensive side of things. So Kobe King's getting much better at that. He's catching up in terms of calling out those plays. And just from the athleticism standpoint, I want to see him on the field. So you have all three of those linebackers flying everywhere. Takeaway number seven, these receivers got some hands, don't they? They really do. Uh, Parker Washington, corner route sideline catch, able to extend those arms and pull in a pass from Sean Clifford. You have Mitchell Tinsley with his sideline catches pinned up against a defender. How about Brenton Strange? That over-the-back catch where he caught the ball through the defender pinned it against him and pulled it through him when the defender was all over him. It was good coverage. It wasn't pass interference. I'm not trying to imply that, but you basically have blanket coverage from the guy that's defending you. And somehow you catch the ball through him. 
It is nice to have that reliability. Uh, Ten guys caught different guys caught a pass. Now that was including two different running backs. Uh, but you had eight total re- natural receivers, whether they're tight ends or wide receivers, catch a pass in Saturday's game against Indiana, and, and they truly do have some fi- fly paper hands. I will say. Takeaway number eight, this is my final one from Penn State's 45-14 to win over Indiana, and that is the defensive line came to play. Uh, the def- defense had a great game overall, the 16 tackles for loss. I think those totaled up to 64 yards lost against Indiana. Uh, but for the defensive line to finally come through, uh, the last time the Penn State defensive line had a sack was Kaziah Izzard against Michigan in, in really in lost time. Uh, when it really didn't matter a a whole bunch. But five sacks by the defensive line, and when you have 16 tackles for a loss, your defensive line is setting the tone up front on the line of scrimmage because you're allowing the linebackers to get through. You're allowing the blitzers to get through because you were eating up space. You were taking on additional blockers, taking on the double teams. So all across the board, when you see that statistic coupled with the defensive linemen actually getting home and the pressure, and it was great to see them win without the blitzes as well. They were uh, rushing four or rushing three guys, and guys were just getting home one-on-one, which was awesome to see. Uh, And I had high expectations for this group. I know it was a very favorable matchup. Indiana's offensive line is just not that good. They're just really not. Uh, I don't know. They they are a little banged up, but they really just don't have that much talent. And Penn State just overwhelmed them, and Manny Diaz didn't really have to scheme anything up to get after the quarterback. So kudos to the defensive line for having that kind of game. All right, final segment is coming up next, and it's about Penn State men's basketball. They get the season underway today against Winthrop. If you can believe it, Penn State men's basketball is back in action at home in the Bryce Jordan Center. And I'm going to tell you the secret that Micah Shrewsbury does not want opponents to know about until they have to see it. It is locked on Nittany Lions. BetOnline.net is your number one source for betting, football, and the start of the new basketball season. Find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, and in-depth analysis on every game. And as always, BetOnline remains your continued source for all of your sports wagering information. With live betting and up-to-the-minute scores for every sport out there, the fastest and the easiest way to check in on all of your favorite games and events, including MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. My name is Zach Seiko. Thanks so much for joining me today on Locked on Nittany Lions. Final segment is going to be devoted to the basketball court. Penn State men's basketball is back. They are coming off a 14-17 and 17 season from a year ago. They won some games in the Big Ten tournament, uh, but came up short, of course, uh, losing to Purdue in a hard-fought battle. And they're going to go through some changes. They lost... Uh, Probably the best player and one of the most memorable guys in Penn State basketball history, and that's John Hara playing basketball overseas now. Uh, But Penn State's got to find a way to adjust, and they open up the 2022-23 season tonight under the second-year head coach, Micah Shrewsbury. Uh, Penn State is going to be a 12-and-a-half favorite tonight against Winthrop, who comes from the Big South Conference. Uh, Winthrop's a very good basketball team. They actually were 23, and respectively, of course. Uh, a Big Ten team like Penn State should be able to handle them. That's why Penn State is almost a 13-point favorite here, right? Uh, but they went 23-9 and last year. They're under the direction of their own second-year head coach, uh, and they lost in the championship game of the Big South. They would have made the tournament, but came up one game short they ended up losing to Longwood uh, in that game but they returned their top three scores so uh, Winthrop should have some offensive firepower when they get back into conference play as for Penn State there's a lot of new faces on this team but also some familiar ones right Jalen Pickett is going to be your impact guy he's your he's your do-it-all player He's going to handle the basketball. He's going to dish out the assists. He's going to score the basketball. He was named to the preseason All Big Ten team. Like Jalen Pickett should be on every opponent's radar, and you cannot get him off the floor. You cannot get Pickett to go to the bench because he does not get tired. He will not get tired at any point in time. He will play probably as close to 40 minutes as he can get. He might sub out uh, for a period of time if Penn State needs a rebound, an extra big guy in there. But you will consistently see him 38, 39, if not 40 minutes every single night. 
Seth Lundy is your best one-on-one -on -one defender. Of course, he's returning, uh, can shoot the three as well, and has just progressed so much from what I've heard over the offseason. Uh, and then you bring in a transfer like Andrew Funk to go along with Miles Dredd, who comes back for another season and uses that extra eligibility. Penn State finally has some more consistency behind the arc. Andrew Funk is automatic from the corner. You can line up Miles Dredd anywhere. So to have that three uh, kind of three-point shooting with the point I'm going to bring up, that secret, that secret I'm going to tell you about here in just a second. But Andrew Funk and Miles Dredd will go along with that secret. Some breakout players that uh, you can expect. One of them is returner Dalian Johnson. He's progressively played more minutes over the past season, and you saw him get a little more work as that season went along. He should have an increased role going into this year. A scorer, a ball handler, a good defender, all around just a talented player. Now the freshman. The freshman for this Penn State men's basketball team, uh, this is the best class. And I'm not just saying that. That's not my opinion. This is the best recruiting class in Penn State men's basketball history. And I'm going to name a few of them that you need to know about. Evan Mahaffey, long defender. He's going to create mismatches. Jameel Brown, the best recruit in this class. Uh, maybe second, depending on uh, how you look at these two players. But Jameel Brown can score the basketball. He's got a natural feel for getting to the basket and dropping some points. Demetrius Lilly is your one of your big guys. Uh, a little underdeveloped, but he will definitely be a force in the paint as time goes on. And to go with that, Keba Jai. Keba Jai, um, it, between him and Jameel Brown, they are the headliners of this group. Keba Jai is going to be a force. And honestly, I expect him to start or at least play a lot of minutes early on and throughout the season for Penn State. Uh, as the big man. This is the best recruiting class in Penn State men's basketball history, and it's because of some of those guys that I just named. And a lot of depth in the backcourt. You know, Jameel Brown might not start right away, but he's going to get a lot of minutes because there's guys like Dalian Johnson, Seth Lundy, Miles Dredd, um, Jalen Pickett. They returned a lot in the backcourt, and that's really nice to have. In addition, you add in a transfer like Cam Winter. Uh, so guys that can all handle the basketball and just play fast. And that's my secret here. That's the secret that Penn State men's basketball doesn't want its opponents to know. And it is they are going to play fast. They are going to run up and down the floor. They're going to push the tempo, push the pace. This team is going to score as many points as they can. And, and don't take my word for it. Micah Shrewsbury has told people this has told the media this, that, you know, hey, we intend to play fast because he was asked, you know, do you like the slow pace? Do you like going, you know, just kind of controlling the game? And he's like, oh, no, we want to run the floor. We want to score some points. We want to play as fast as possible. So those games where they were slowed down, you would be put to sleep. Uh, Penn State would try to score about 50, 55 points and uh, basically play keep away from the opponent. Not anymore. You can forget about it, scratch it. They are going, expect them to score 75 plus in almost every game they play until they get in those types of defensive scrums. But Penn State's going to get out there and run, and they got the horses to do just that. That's the secret. Penn State's going to play fast, and they're going to try to put up as many points as possible. Forget about controlling the ball. They are going to go. They're going to run at you and run at you hard. My name is Zach Seiko. Thanks so much for joining me on this episode today. Uh, enjoy the game between Penn State men's basketball and Winthrop. It should should be a fun season. I expect Penn State actually to finish in the top eight of the Big Ten. And I know those are lofty expectations, especially since the preseason votes put them around 11th or 12th. I think they are better than that. Uh, and it will show even with all the changes that are coming. You can follow the show uh, on Twitter at Locked on Nittany Lines. You can follow me at Zach underscore Seiko and subscribe to the new YouTube channel. Videos are now up. If you want to watch the podcast, subscribe to the YouTube channel, Locked on Nittany Lions. Thanks for making Locked on Nittany Lions your first listen today. For your second listen today, check out Locked on Sports today. From the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked on can provide. Locked on Sports today, available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts.